everyone, Vincent here from VincentWin.com and welcome to the fourth episode of After Effects 101, the series where I teach beginners the basic techniques of After Effects. So today in this episode, we're going to be focused on text animation. Now we're going to try to combine what you learned in the past two tutorials on keyframing and animation. We're going to try to combine those two techniques together to create something a little bit more versatile, something more universal, and something more useful in general so you can incorporate them into your movies and projects. So when you first start off in After Effects, your primary goal is probably to create somewhat of a game montage for your COD or perhaps a short film trailer for your short film. And regardless of what you're trying to create, you're going to need to learn how to create and animate text and animate and transition text. And this is where we're going to go in in this video tutorial. We're going to focus on some of the basic techniques and some of the different types of text transitions that you'll see in your favorite Hollywood trailer and your game montage and such. So let's dive right in. I have an example here called the cinema opening sequence. And I'm going to play it back, and as you can see, we have some pretty simple text transitions. So what we have here is a flyby, where text flies in, comes out, and a new text flies in, similar to this. Now, as you can see, the basic technique of the text transition is very simple. The text just flies in and flies out, flies in and flies out. But the reason why this project looks so nice and really well done is because of the environment around it. So the key point to keep in mind is you can still have a simplistic, simple text transition and animation, but if you build a complex scene around it, it can be really, really good. So keep in mind, you don't need any hardcore complex text transitions as long as everything flows nicely. Keep that in mind. So let's dive right into After Effects here. I'm going to create a new composition, composition, new composition, or Control or Command N. It's going to bring up the composition settings. We're going to change the composition name to maybe perhaps Flyby, because this is what we're going to look at first, how to create this Flyby effect. Um, width and height does not really matter. Frame rate 29.976 or NTSC DV. Uh, duration about 10 seconds long and hit OK. So basically right here we have a blank composition. Let's go ahead and create our first text layer that we're going to animate. So let's go to layer, new, text. And it's going to bring up the type texting tool. And then what we're going to do is create our first text. So create the text that you might wish to animate. So Vincent Wynn. Can hit Control Command A and pretty much control the scaling, the size, and change the font to whatever you want. Um, so basically, by default, the text is in the center, is which we want. Um, let's go ahead and animate this at first. So when you first look at a trailer, text is never going to stay still. If the text is staying in one place, I highly doubt it's a trailer. No matter how little the text is moving, the text is always moving somewhat, even very subtle. So what we need to do to create this subtle movement is to change the tracking. That's what I like to do. So for an example, if I go down to the uh, arrow down here, click on animate, and hit on tracking on the very bottom. You can't see it, it's cut off, but hit tracking. And basically, go to the beginning of your timeline and go ahead and hit, hit a stopwatch for a tracking amount, which will start a keyframe. And let's move about five seconds to the timeline, around five seconds, and change the tracking amount to about nine. So essentially, the text is going to start off like this, and then over time, it's going to spread out a little bit. Because again, text in the trailer is not going to remain still at all. It's always going to be moving, even if it's a very subtle little effect. But this effect really makes a big difference, because when you're animating, and you see that your text is staying still, you don't really know what's wrong with it. It just looks wrong, and that's probably the reason why, because it's not moving and trailer text is always moving, in my opinion. But anyway, so this is the basic um, tracking, and actually you can create a trailer transition like this too. If you just you know, hit T on the keyboard, uh, hit a stopwatch, keyframe the opacity, so it's gonna start off at zero, fade in, hit a stopwatch again right here, and then go ahead and fade out. So again, you have a very simple transition right here. It just fades in, moves a little bit, and then fades out. While if we delete the tracking, if we just delete the tracking, it's gonna look kind of weird. It's gonna just fade in, stay still, fade out. And as you can see, that does not look anything like a trailer. So this tracking amount thing that we did right here it actually makes a large difference as it gives it somewhat of a subtle movement. So let's go back to um, what we did for the trailer. So we have our tracking right here. The tracking is tracking our text. Now let's create our flyby and in order to do that I want you to hit toggle switches or slash modes down here. At the very bottom hit toggle switches slash modes until you see a little cube right here. And what this is is it actually enables your text for a 3D to react to a 3D camera and all that stuff and gives you the Z position. So if I hit the 3D cube right here, hit the knob and you can see that we have um, our 3D layer now. You can see this little blue access right here. 
Anyways, let's go hit the selection tool or hit V. So we're gonna go into our text here and hit P on the keyboard, P is in popcorn. And as you can see, we have three axes now. We have the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Now, pay attention, if I, um, if I unable or if I disable the cube and make it to a 2D layer, you can see that we only have X and Y axis. But if we enable the cube or make it a 3D layer, we have now the orientation and all that stuff. And we also have the Z position, which is pretty much the depth. So with this Z position, we're going to animate our flyby. So go ahead and click on the position keyframe, stopwatch. And we're going to drag the Z axis back. And if you hold shift, you can actually scroll or move through the numbers a lot faster. Now, we don't want to overdo it. So just move it barely enough so you don't see anymore. Just about here. So until we don't see the text anymore. You don't want to overdo it or else it's going to be way back there. It's going to fly way too fast. But move it back to the camera so you don't see anymore. And let's go ahead and move 10 frames. So press page down 10 times until you get to frame 10. And I find that this value works the best when um, animating text flybys because we want something pretty fast and strong. We don't want anything too slow. So about 10 frames is good. And then hit zero. So our text is going to be out of the range, out of the view, and it's going to fly in in 10 frames. And because of our tracking, our text is not going to stay still when it lands. See, when it lands, it's going to start moving. And then maybe around 2.30 or two, uh, two seconds, 2.3 seconds, we're going to hit a keyframe again. So it's going to start from right here and then move about maybe a second or so and just push it back. So increase the Z space. So we have it zoom in and it's tracking right now and then it's going to zoom out like that. Now again, it's not finished. We need to um, keyframe the opacity so when it, when it zooms out it's going to fade out as well. So let's hit T on the keyboard and then hit a stopwatch. So it's going to be at 100%. Hit U on the keyboard to reveal all keyframes. And we're going to move this 100 keyframe right about here. So right before it starts zooming out, it's going to be at 100% opacity. About right here. Right here is when it's about to zoom out and it's at 100 opacity. And by the time it finished fading out, we want it to be at zero opacity. So again, we have our zooming in, staying still, but tracking still, so it's not completely staying still. And then it's gonna zoom out. And while it's zooming out, it's also fading out with these two keyframes right here. Just like that. And essentially, that's what this is all about. And since uh, flyby just repeat itself over and over again, we can also just duplicate this a whole bunch of times. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the end of the text layer and just drag the end to about right here. We don't want it to be too long. This is how long our text is approximately, so we're gonna keep the layer this long. And then we're also going to duplicate it so we can repeat it over and over again. So you can do this by hitting Control or Command D, like that, or select your layer that you wanna duplicate. Go to, I believe, Edit, Duplicate. So now we have two of the exact same thing, but I'm gonna offset the second one a little bit. So Let's just hit you and the key you and the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes again. And then we're just gonna line this up accordingly. So right when it zooms out, right when it zooms out, we want our text to start. Alright, so text zooms out, and then we start the next text layer. So right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the text a little bit so you don't get confused. I'm going to call this um, flyby titles. And maybe just offset it. So pretty much you want to play around with it and adjust the timing of it until it seems about right. So we have our Vincent Wynn text flies in, zooms out and fades out, and then our new text comes in. And then you can just keep on doing this, repeating it, duplicating, repeating it until you get as many flyby titles as you wish. That's pretty much the core essential of it. And of course you can apply a gradient to the text, a glow, you can create some stars in the background, whatever you want. This is the basic core on how to create flyby titles and after effects. So let's move on to something a little bit more simplistic. Let's go ahead and create a new composition. Composition, new composition. And we're gonna just call this um, maybe a linear white text. And essentially that's what it is. Um, it's not very complex at all, but you might wanna use it. I'm gonna 
expose you guys to some of the basic effects out there in After Effects that will help you animate and transition your effects. So again, let's create a new text layer, layer, new text, and create our text, Vincent Wynn. And then we're going to, again, animate the tracking. That's the first thing I like to do when I create trailer text. So go down to the scroll arrow, go down to animate, and then go to tracking at the very bottom. Go to the beginning of your timeline, hit a stopwatch, move about six seconds, and change the tracking amount to, let's say, maybe 11. So again, our text is tracking out. And then let's go to the effects and presets real quick and search in linear wipe. Now this is a very simple effect under transition. And what it does is it wipes your text onto the screen. So drag the effect onto your text layer. So in the effects control panel, we have our linear wipe effect. And by default, it doesn't really do anything. So we have to animate this. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, close it to make it more room. And then we're going and go ahead and change the transition completion. Well, first off, experiment. If we increase the percentage, you can see that our text wipes off. So let's start at 100. Let's start with nothing. So we have nothing. And then we're going to slowly animate the transition down. Transition complete percentage down. So it's going to reveal itself. So we're going to start at 100%. So you don't see anything. So hit a stopwatch for the transition complete completion. So we have nothing. Hit U on the keyboard so we can see all of our keyframes. So right here, we have our transition completion. We're going to move about two seconds to the timeline and change this transition completion down to zero. So we have our text wiping in. But it looks kind of ugly right now. So we want to change the feather to about 100, 100 pixels. So it's a little bit smoother instead of something harsh. We have a nice, simple fade in like that. And I believe... Um, the Batman movie, The Dark Knight, ha um, their trailer had a simple linear wipe as well when it says The Dark Knight. It's pretty much this font, I believe, with the same transition, except we have a gradient and it's 3D text. But if you want to learn how to more about creating 3D text in After Effects, um, my channel has a video tutorial on how to create 3D text using Shatter, so check that out if you're a beginner. So just something like this, pretty simple. And then of course you can always fade it out by doing the same thing except in reverse. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So hit a keyframe for the transition completion. So it's going to start at 0%, which is revealing itself. And then move about two seconds in, and then animate it to 100% again. So it's going to fade out. Wipe in, and then wipe out, essentially. Again, play around with the timing and, and play around with the um, duration and how fast and short the keyframes are. Um, I like to also highlight all of our keyframes. Right click. Go to keyframe assistant at the very bottom and hit easy ease just to ease out the transition a little bit better. And by doing that, you get this nice smooth transition right here. So let's go ahead and apply some more effects to this to expand your knowledge and you know have some more practice on this. We're going to go ahead and go to effects and presets and go ahead and search in ramp and drag that into our text layer or double click. So now we have our ramp layer in our convex controls panel. And go ahead and we can also move our, go ahead and move our circle nodes down a little bit and move this one upwards. So we have our ramp applied closer to our text. And then we're gonna flip this. So the start color is gonna be white. So it's gonna be white on top. And then the end color is gonna be a dark gray. So we get some of a nice little, little gradient on our text right here. Go ahead and adjust these points accordingly. You can also use the, um, controls right here. So this is the before and after. Looks a little bit better. And so essentially again, we have our nice simple transition for a trailer or for a montage or for your short film. And another thing that we want to focus on are some of the built-in effects within After Effects. So let's create a new composition again. And call this um let's call this effects. Hit OK. And create again our new text layer. Layer new text and go ahead and create our text Vincent Wynn. Now when we're using effects in, within After Effects or the built-in presets for the 3D characters sometimes the tracking doesn't play really nicely with these effects so just keep that in mind. So if we go to the effects and presets and go ahead and search in 3D you can see that under animation presets text 3D text 
we have a whole bunch of these um, built-in presets that we can use for our text. For example, if we go ahead and double click on this one, our text simply just flies in. It creates its own text, but if you drag, the, um, if you go ahead and drag this into our text layer, it's going to animate our text. So we have that transition. I mean, there's a whole bunch in here that you can play around with. Um, let's go ahead and try out the fly, 3D fly in at random. So, you know, some of these effects are pretty cool. And the good thing about them is that you can go ahead and go into them and, uh, and adjust them and edit them because, again, they're presets. So go ahead and click on one of them. Click and drag one of them in. And go ahead and, as you can see here, we have some nice transition going on right here. You can actually go hit U on the keyboard. And you can see all the keyframes, like the position keyframes, the offset keyframes, and everything like that. So essentially, you can adjust all these presets and edit them to your liking. So don't think that these are just permanent and that you have to use these exact keyframes and such. You can actually drag them in and actually edit them and adjust them to your likings. So you can go ahead and freely modify them. And also a very popular effect for 3D transition is the evaporate effect. A lot of people seem to ask me about. It's under text, blurs, evaporate. Just go ahead and drag that in. And what it does is it just evaporates your text. And then you can go hit U on the keyboard and, and reverse these keyframes around. So instead of fading out, they, they, they can also fade in like that. So pretty cool. This is a very basic rundown on text animation within After Effects. Remember, we have the text flybys. We have our linear wipe. We have all the other effects. They're both in, like, I think about 50 built-in 3D text effect within After Effects. And there's so many more that we'll be going over through in the later tutorials of the series. So just keep in mind. Keep your eye out on these tutorials coming out, A101 tutorials. And don't worry, we'll be going over more text transitions in the future and more complex scenes. But for now, this is the essential core on how to animate and create some basic titles for your trailers. We should get you a little bit going, should get you going and keep you inspired on creating more. And don't forget to explore the effects and controls panel. There's a whole bunch of effects out there and a whole bunch of things that you can do. So go ahead and experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. And just keep that in mind. And also check out my website at vincentwin.com where I post a whole bunch of basic tutorials as well as more complex and really cool inspiring articles. And we have some free scripts going on here, some more um, inspiration video uh, videos right here. Organic paint transition, you want to check that out too. I mean, we have so many things on here that you might want to check out, especially if you're a beginner and you're new to the industry and you're new to the design world. Here you can find a whole bunch of articles on things from other people other professionals out there that do video tutorials, um, articles, and freebies out there, as well as liking the Facebook page, which will really show me support. So 195 people like this page already, so go ahead and support me. Maybe we can bump it up to 200 or so. I also post some things I'm working on, such as this thing right here, some organic kind of fractal noise going on. And also, I post some other updates on my website and other videos and things that I'm working on and screenshots. So check that out, vincentwin.com and facebook.com slash thevincentwin. All links in the video description. Thanks for supporting me, guys. And hopefully, we'll see you next time on episode 5. Thanks a lot, guys. Comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.